Please, gentlemen. Sir John? I say it's an obligation. No matter what has happened, Phoenician is committed to pay, and we shall have to do so. A million pounds? You'd seriously pay out a million pounds of the shareholders' money when you don't have to? They'd boot you out of the next meeting if you did, and quite right too. A million pounds was the figure agreed, Bridge North. And anyway, why all the fuss? You know what the Samarkand oil concession means to us. Exactly. If we don't clear six million net profit in the first 18 months, I'll resign. And about time, too. Now, let's look at this situation realistically, shall we? Three months ago, we, Phoenician Oil, were approached by the representative of an unknown private party who suggested that Keller's objection to merging his oil fields with ours could be overcome inside six months in exchange for a fee of one million pounds. Now, Keller's dead. The merger will go through and it needn't cost us a cent. And yet, two of our directors still want to pay out this million. Why? Because we have a contract. And when I make a contract, I stick to it. Rubbish! Yes? Thank you. Gentlemen, the other party's representative is here. Good. Let's get on with it. Good morning, Miss Aikman. Good morning. We have just been discussing what could be done about your proposition. But there's nothing to discuss, I'm sure. Mr. Keller no longer opposes the merger. Now you merely have to pay our fee. Thank you. We don't have to pay a cent. He didn't do anything. Keller's death was an act of God. Our contract did not call on us to do anything, gentlemen. Except prove that Mr. Keller's opposition would be withdrawn before a specified date. Well, it has been withdrawn. She is absolutely right, you know. Now, listen, there's no reason to be Gentlemen, I think we should take a vote. Those who feel that we are obligated to pay this fee should signify in the usual way. Those in favour of payment. Thank you. Four. Those against? Five. I also am in favour of paying. You see, Miss Eckman, we're deadlocked. Very well, then. I shall convey your decision to my principal. And perhaps we can meet again tomorrow. Yes, there's a good lass. And why not have him come up here himself? We'd all like to meet him. I'm afraid that would be impossible. Good day. Thank you, Miss Aikman. Thank you. <laughs> it's a rather little cracker, that one. Why can't we employ agents like her? Item five, gentlemen. Welcome home and good evening, Mr. Bridge North. How did you get in? Who gave you that? What do you want? I think you can get round me, eh? No. How very disappointing. And I thought I'd found a real man in you, Mr. Prishno. Wait a minute. There's no need to be hasty. You could always try persuading me. Do you think I uh, could succeed? I'll try.
Penelope. Mr. Bridgenorth? Could have been very nice, Mr. Bridgenorth. But now you're paralyzed. You can see, and you can hear, and you can feel. But you can't move, and you can't talk. Oh, poor Mr. Bridgenorth. You see, it is a nasty old drug she carries in her ring. It only lasts just a few minutes. And doesn't leave any traces at all. Isn't that clever? The police will think you've committed suicide. Penelope, take his feet. Bye-bye, Mr. Bridgenor. Well, I have had men fall for me before, but never like this. 